Strange yeah. Wang, yeah. So now I'll go back with another video. I am Strange Wang, and today you read the title. You know what movie I'm reviewing. So let's get down the brass tacks. I gave Unhinged 7 out of 10 Wangs. Why? 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 Because I really like the story for this movie that it takes place in one day over a road rage incident and the person you road raged against has had a really, really, really bad day. Russell Crowe I thought was perfect for this film. He's gained a lot of weight, which actually helped the role. This has made him a big burly man and pretty terrifying with that as well. This character reminded me kind of um, falling down Michael Douglas character in that movie. Kate Fear, not the one with Robert De Niro because I don't like that movie because it's not as good as the original with Robert Mitchum. He reminded me of Roger... Uh, English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Russell Crowe reminds me of Robert Mitchum and how the roles are so similar and the actions and whatnot. However, Russell Crowe's character doesn't care about the police. Oh, ah! There's a line in the film that says that, which is different from both of those movies because those characters aren't trying to get caught. So you had this man almost like a Terminator in an aspect of I don't give a fuck about the consequences because to him, life's over and there are no consequences. So he follows Rachel Hunter through the town and hurts everyone she loves and tries to hurt her to teach her a lesson. And I like movies like this. I like movies like this a lot. I mentioned Cape Fear and Falling Down. There's some more. I enjoy those too. It's just a very simple story. It keeps you enthralled. It keeps you enthralled. And like those movies, this movie, there's not no dull moment in it. I'm not saying it's a perfect movie, but it's not going to be boring at any time. There's always going to be something entertaining in the film. And that leads me to one of my first problems. He didn't need to do as much as he did in the film. There's a lot of unnecessary car accidents and murders of civilians that we don't know, that we don't care about, that just there to look cool and keep your attention when the story is good enough. Another thing I didn't like about the movie is the actors, minus Russell Crowe, uh, the actors of Kyle and Rachel were miscast. I didn't care about these characters. I felt they had some kind of chemistry to each other. The mother son relationship was there i guess it wasn't very strong it wasn't a strong bond it wasn't something i was invested in i wasn't invested in these characters i didn't care that she got fired i didn't care that her mother has dementia and is in a nursing home i didn't care about none of that stuff whoa did i want her to die yeah. I a lot. no but i didn't care enough for her to live either way i was kind of just like meh if he gets her i haven't seen that movie and that'd be interesting but Spoiler alert, they get away and they kill him in a very gruesome way, which is kind of cool. I enjoyed it a lot. Another person I thought was miscast was Jimmy Simpson. Last time I saw him in the movie, he was also a lawyer and it was the Invisible Man. And he just has a very punchable face. That's a fact. So to put him in a good guy role, I'm helping out this divorced mom. She's going through a divorce, me and her best friends. And I, I understand her. I'm taking time. I'm have patience with her and all these other good things, compassion, all that, all that, all that nonsense that hogwash. When he got killed, I was like, Yay! if you change the casting, about, I'm pretty sure my investment letter, fuck. With a change of the cast, I think my investment level would have raised a little bit. Any, because the whole point of this movie is there's a good guy and a bad guy, and I need to care about the good guy, and I don't. And, but one thing that helps is the show in the very beginning of the movie him kill his ex-wife her new man and burn down their house and which to me when i saw that in the beginning i was like ah i didn't like it because i was like i want to see the story unfold i don't want to dislike the guy right off the bat i want to kind of have that struggle within the movie add another layer to it but it just went off <laughs> went straight off it was like hey you, we don't like this guy. I don't like this guy. I don't want you to like this guy. Here's why. And I thought that was cheap, but it did help me invest in her a little bit more than I did because it's like, this dude's crazy. 
he's terrible. Even before he did anything to her, I knew he was terrible. So, and it added a bunch of attention to that first interaction between the two of them. So overall, in this film, it worked very well. Even though I didn't like it off the bat. Another thing I really was mixed about is the director, how he hid clues and things that would come up later on in the film. I think that is good that he did that. And for a few seconds there, I knew, all right, this is going to show up later. But the film's so entertaining, you forget about it. So I really wish he would have hid things a little bit better. Because when he does show you something, example, spoiler review, her scissors for her hair cutting appointments with the candy cane ends. She makes a big deal about these scissors. Like, oh, where's my scissors at? Oh, they're on the kitchen table under a pile of papers. You use scissors that you cut hair with and you put them in the kitchen where you eat food? That shit is gross! Stuff like that, it doesn't make sense, but it is hidden. And there's enough detail and talk about it. When it comes up later, you're like, oh, I got it. But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. It's very fun, entertaining. Nothing that's going to make you write home to my about, though. So, like I said before, I gave Unhinged 7 out of 10 wings. Tell me what you think about this movie down in the comment section below. Scroll back up, hit the like button, share the video, and subscribe.